Okay, in this video, we're going to do a quick review of the Solar Eclipse Timer app. And this is Gordon Telepun's app. This is probably the most popular timer app out there, SET Solar Eclipse Timer. And it's free, but you do have to pay $1.99 for the solar eclipse data for April 8, 2024. So I'll show you that in a minute. But let's just bring the app up. And you can see here it begins with just an overview message important app setup message for this app to help you on eclipse day the system notification requires your phone must be properly turned on go to the device sound check screen and do test number three okay so let's just take a look here so you got eight buttons and for the purposes of this video i'm just going to do a quick and dirty overview assuming you were in the path of totality and you just open this app and you want to get started there's really only just a few things you need to do and then we'll go in more depth as to some of the other features of this app. So to start out with, though, we're going to click button number two, which says do a device sound check. So and if you play the first um, video or, or uh, click the first play button under play Eclipse notification audio file, you will see that it will check whether your phone is in silent mode. And if it is, it'll notify you. So. You have to turn your phone off of silent mode in order for this app to work. It's going to speak to you and tell you the different eclipse times uh, th during a, a total solar eclipse. So as an example, number two, if you click that button, play eclipse announcements audio file, then it will actually speak to you. It'll say things like second contact in two minutes observed for shadow bands. And of course, at the beginning of the eclipse, it'll tell you, you know, 50 seconds to first contact. And it will actually not only tell you which contact points to watch out for, but also what, you know, aspects of the eclipse, whether it's shadow bands or ambient temperature drop, or of course, when you get toward totality, contact two, then all the amazing things that happen there as well. So anyway, you do a device sound check, make sure your audio is on, and then let's click button number three, so, uh, select and eclipse the time. And you can see here, I've already purchased the data for the April 8, 2024 solar eclipse. But if you hadn't, then there would be a button there that gave you the opportunity to purchase it. Again, it's a buck 99, absolutely worth it to get very precise timings for this eclipse. So I bring it up and I click OK. And then if I, cl I click tap to get my GPS location in the very top, you will see that it loads my GPS coordinates. And basically, I'm ready to go. Now, as I'm recording this video, I'm actually outside the path of totality. So it's going to notify me you are not in the path of totality. And you need to basically do one of two things, which is essentially get into the path if you want to see this eclipse. So now, the other thing you can do is if you just want to test this app out ahead of time, you can actually type in your latitude and longitude coordinates. And we're going to do that right now. And I'm just going to pull up my map app. And I plugged in Hardy, Arkansas, which is one of the spots we're targeting, very near the center line. So, and if you do that in your map app, you know, a specific location, you can get the coordinates for the GPS. In this case, it would be 36.31562 north by 91.48275 west. So let's plug those coordinates in and see what the app and basically get the uh, the timings for for that location again in the path so 36.31562 and then the second one we'll bring up is a uh, 91.48275, 91.48275, 91.48, So if I click, you see it brings up the address in Hardy, Arkansas, right on Main Street. Now, that may not be exactly where I would be located. You could actually narrow this down even further let's just say hypothetically that's where I was on eclipse day open the app click the third button click tap to get my GPS location it loads in the coordinates and basically at this point I am ready to go so the app the app will actually speak to me 
and tell me precisely when the eclipse times are and what to look for. Uh, look for. So we'll go into detail on that in just a second. But notice the uh, the contact times now. So you got four contacts, of course. C1 is when the moon first touches the sun. C2 is at the end of the partial phases, just before totality begins, when you get you know Bailey's beads and diamond ring and all those amazing effects. C3 is when totality ends, and then C4 is at the end of the back end partial phases. So you can see in this location, it tells me I am in a good observing position. I'm in the path of totality. These are universal times, so you have to back out five hours to get the precise central time. But it tells me basically that the contact one, the eclipse begins at 1237 and 22 seconds. Uh, contact two is when totality begins. That's at 154 and three seconds. Again, central daylight time. And then it ends at 158 and 16 seconds. So I'm getting a little over four minutes of totality. And then contact four, it ends at 314 and three seconds. So if I click load contact times, there it is. So this is my interface now. So it tells me the local time. It tells me my total duration, which is four minutes and 13 seconds. And so basically I'm ready to go now. The app will actually speak to me as the eclipse is unfolding. So you want to get this set up just before the, you know, the, 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 the eclipse actually begins. So now again, for the purposes of quick and dirty, open the app, assume you're in the path of totality, find your spot on eclipse day, April 8, 2024, open the eclipse app, select the eclipse to time, and then click basically load your GPS coordinates and you're ready to go. Now there's other fine tuning that you can do. So first contact, second contact, you can actually adjust for lunar limb variations on your spot in totality. That's a little bit more advanced. I'm going to reference some of the training that, that Gordon has done on his YouTube channel as well as other presentations. But bottom line is if you plan this ahead of time, you can load up uh, an interactive eclipse map and actually calibrate for not only your timing in the in the eclipse path, but also for variations on the lunar limb. If you're trying to, you know, uh, photograph precisely down to the second, so that's really more not only for observing but also for for photographing the eclipse. So anyway, just want to let you know that that's there. Now, if you go back to the home screen, you'll see the eight buttons again. If you're just getting started and you want to get familiar with this app, the first tab is excellent. Hello, Solar Clips and this Timer basically user. Loads up in your hand, you are holding the best and most user-friendly app in the world for helping you of observe a solar eclipse. It's Gordon speaking. It is the original eclipse. So I would recommend timer, watching and it allows me to be your personal kind of guide get during the with eclipse. This app. So Learn that's more. The first tab. We we talked about um, tabs two and three, which is basically when you're setting up to observe and time an eclipse in the in the path of totality or if you wanted to, to to practice outside the path first uh tab four they they he actually provides a a um a video simulating an eclipse and then announcing some of the you know the audio call outs during the eclipse so in this particular case observe for shadow bands <coughs> So this is a simulated eclipse for practice purposes only. So you can kind of simulate the environment of an eclipse. People around, crowds cheering, ambient noise, whatever. And then uh, the app actually speaking to you. 60 you seconds. Here. Observe 60 seconds for shadow bands. You can see a crescent sun. It's telling you to observe for shadow bands. And then, of course, you see crowds cheering. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So you can watch that video as well. If you want to stop and move on, just click, click stop in the upper right-hand corner here. And it takes you back to the home screen. Now, tab 5 is also very interesting. Hear all eclipse announcements. If I tap on that, I can actually load up a, a simulation of an entire eclipse. Now, this is condensed down to an hour and 10 minutes, not a full three hours like you would typically get for an eclipse. But this will basically simulate what your phone is going to say or how this app is going to speak to you on Eclipse Day. So 
this also would be good practice. Open that up, and again, I'll just stop it and go back here. If you're back at the home screen, all you do is click all uh, to hear all Eclipse announcements, and then over the course of an hour and 10 minutes, it will actually, the app will speak to you each at each point during the Eclipse. So Gordon's voice, Gordon Telephone, the developer of this app, he will actually speak to you. You know, first contact in 50 seconds. Um, you know, second contact in, in one minute, observe for shadow bands. And then he'll actually tell you when to take your filters off. But basically all the call outs for the entire eclipse over the course of one hour and 10 minutes. So you don't have to have the app open the entire time. Your phone will notify you. It'll ding you three or four times, remind you to open the app, and then it'll actually tell you, you know, what is coming next. So bottom line is that's good practice for getting familiar with this app. That's tab five, hear all eclipse announcements. Now you can go to tab six. This is the GPS data screen. Again, I just entered my coordinates manually for a, a position in um, Hardy, Arkansas for viewing the eclipse. I'm outside as I'm shooting this video, <coughs> but you can load other coordinates as well if you have maybe four or five spots planned for that particular day, depending on weather and travel conditions. So maybe you have multiple spots picked out. You can type in multiple GPS coordinates and then save those and and have different options here. So again, if I load these, then it'll tell me this. Now, this is the screen we looked at earlier. Again, same location in Hardy, Arkansas. Let's say I wanted to save this for future reference. I could click in the lower right here where it says Save Eclipse. It'll take me to a separate screen and then I can name this, you know, Hardy... Um, Arkansas, I'll just say Arc dash, let's just say Main Street, something along those lines. And then I can add other data in here as well. You can see I'm shooting this on March the 2nd, which is a little over a month, basically five weeks away from the eclipse. And it tells me my location, 103 East Main Street, my GPS coordinates, and then there's a whole bunch of other things. First uh, contact, second contact, max eclipse, third contact, whatever. You could enter more details about the site, you know, Main Street, um, Eclipse Party, ECLIP Eclipse Party, uh, PA. And then I could just say something like plan C, if clouded out, if primary site, site, ah. you know, something along those lines, whatever you want to put in there. And you can put weather, sky conditions, just all kinds of data. Okay, so then I can just say done. And that stores that particular eclipse in the app. And I can load up that eclipse data in the future if I want to select that particular location. So as an example, lower right, uh, basically the bottom of the app in the middle, it says eclipse data. Let's click on that. You can see here I've already saved three or four different eclipses. So I've got a spot, a couple spots in Maud near um, Texarkana. And then I got one in Moralton near the center line further north. So... You know, if I wanted to load Moralton as an example, um, then I can just click on that one and uh, tap to load this GPS data so it brings it up. And now I've got all the data for that particular location. So then it'll tell me again, 4 minutes, 13 seconds, and it will tell me the, you know, the... The data so this this eclipse is now ready to go if I, if I was actually at that location so anyway um and then uh you've got other these last two tabs are just more advanced for if you were going to photograph the eclipse you can get a very precise um basically contact time or uh, times for photographing each of these images in the eclipse. So again, I'd have to load my GPS data for this. So 
I'm right now it's got the Moralton data up. So calculate contact times, tap to load the contact times. And then uh, if I go back to the home screen, partial phase timing, there it is. So you can see on the left there, it tells me. Now, at the time of the shooting, it's before daylight savings time. So I'm actually off by one hour. So keep that in mind. So assuming it was central daylight time after daylight savings, which actually kicks in a week from when I'm shooting this video, uh, you know, it's a week, week later. So what it tells me is that 1233 and 32 seconds, that's when first contact begins at this location. And um, I'm going to want to snap a picture at that particular time, as well as 1235 and 32 seconds. And it just keeps going through. And, and basically, you can set up your entire imaging sequence if you want to. And he also gives you a worksheet that you can fill out, download, print out, whatever you want to do. Again, I'm not going to get into too many details. Gordon talks more about this in some of his training videos. He has a YouTube channel. Just look for Solar Eclipse Timer, Gordon Telepun, and he will give you more information. Uh, lastly, he, uh, he wrote a book, very detailed, and you can buy it, order it at eclipse solareclipsetimer.com. You can get the PDF version. You can get the hard copy this is if you really want to delve into the eclipse. I will say there's a lot of really useful videos on YouTube also. If you just do a search for Gordon Telepun or 2024 Solar Eclipse Timer or Solar Eclipse Timer, uh, he's got several very interesting videos of some of the effects of the solar eclipse that he's going to be looking for. So, But anyway, it's, a, it's an app that has a lot of layers to it, but the quick and dirty is... You download the app for free. You pay the buck ninety nine to get the solar eclipse data for April 8, 2024. You hit the second tab to test your audio and make sure that your phone is out of silent mode. If it brings the second screen up, then you got to switch it on the left side of your phone here to make sure that the silent mode is off and that this, the phone will ding and speak to you. Then you click the third button which says select an eclipse to time. Again, I've purchased the data for April 8, 2024. So I'll load it up. I get my GPS coordinates. Let's say I was actually in that location. Then all I would have to do is tap, click the, the top button that says tap to get my GPS location. It loads them up. And then I click calculate contact times. And then I click the third button on the bottom here which says load contact times. And there I, there you go. So now I am ready to go. The app is loaded and Gordon will speak to me throughout the course of the eclipse, telling me what to do at each stage of the eclipse so that I don't forget. And it's very easy to get distracted when you're around people or when you're trying to make sure your equipment is set up and operating properly and there's just a lot of distractions. So this app will keep you on track and on task and avoid getting derailed as a result of some of those distractions. That's why it is so handy and the timing is so precise. So again, that's the quick and dirty. Uh, but to learn more, click the first tab, new users on the very top. That'll take you through a tutorial video. And then also... Um, click the fifth tab to hear all Eclipse announcements. Those are the two most important tabs for getting familiar with this app. It's called Solar Eclipse Timer SET, developed by Gordon, uh, Gordon Telepun. Probably the most popular app for timing solar eclipses. And just kind of a quick overview. Check it out, download it, and use it on Eclipse Day. Clear skies for April 8th.